All right, so this is Dane from Garage Strength, and here I am with Brooks from North Mountain Pastures Co-op, and uh, he's here to talk about the ranged animals that he raises on the farm here at Chestnut Hollow. Uh, Brooks, how's it going? Good, Dane. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you too. So, what what makes your animals here um, so much more nutritious than the animals that you will find in the grocery store or um, anywhere else, really? Um, I think uh, it's two things. I think it's their it's genetics and environment, and I think those things kind of work hand in hand. Um, so the genetic side of it is um, these red cows here are the beginnings of our uh, future dairy herd. These are milking Devons, um, and they've been bred for the last um, several centuries to thrive on minimal forage and create lots of butter fat from, from minimal forage. And what I mean by minimal forage is um, uh, pasture that's not like the most gorgeous lush, lush pasture. Um, so if we give them gorgeous lush pasture, they're just going to produce even more butter fat. Um, they just thrive through the winter as well on you know baled hay and stored forages and stuff like that. The sheep are um, Romneys. They're they're a breed that was uh, developed in uh, the UK also for the last few centuries. Um, so both of these are British breeds of animals. And um, the thing the thing that we like about the Romneys is their parasite resistance and their um, their hoof. Health. Um, so sheep have a lot of problems with internal parasites and they also have a lot of problems with their hooves. And these guys, um, from a combination of genetics and I think also proper management, um, their parasite uh, load is minimal and their, their hooves have been really healthy. Um, and so the management side of it is that you can see these, these two wire fences here. These guys are moved every day. So they're only on this pasture for 24 hours. Um, and so the whole point of that, you can see the pasture up there that they haven't eaten yet, and that has been rested for um, over 70 days now. So that pasture hasn't had an animal on it for 70 days. That means any parasite eggs that were in there have been baked out by the sun already, and any parasites that might have been living in the grasses that could reinfect the uh, sheep or the cows are dead by now. And so that keeps them healthier uh, moving on, but it also keeps the soil healthier. You can see all this stuff here that's uneaten, and some people might call this wasted grass because it's kind of just trampled over. Um, and instead of just sort of eating it down like right here, where it's you know just three or four inches high, they've actually tramped a bunch of it into the ground. But the combination of that trampling and their pooping into the soil actually creates compost. And so what we're doing by doing this is creating uh, a new layer of topsoil, which makes the nutrients in our soil more available, which then next time they come around about um, three months from now, will um, give them more nutrients uh, in their body and that translates into more nutrients in their meat or milk, which um, we can consume and then have more nutrient dense foods. So how do you pair the, the chickens with the sheep and the, the cows? So yesterday the cows were in this paddock here and you can see the flies actually laying their eggs right now. Um, which means um, in the next day or two there's going to be um, maggots hatching out of here and they, they have one day to be maggots before they turn into flies and increase our fly population. So instead of you know spraying pesticide or spraying whatever to get rid of the flies, we bring the chickens in here and the chickens will scratch through all of this poop and they'll not only turn this pile into a pile this wide which fertilizes a bigger area, but they'll also eat all of the um, maggots that are in here and they'll get extra protein while they're eating um, the grasses and the weed seeds which provide them with um, nutrition that, that uh, annual grains like, like wheat and corn can't provide. So how does this play a role in the nutrition value of their meat? So um, the animal products then that come from this, like for the chickens, their eggs or their meat are going to have um, a higher, um, higher level of um, omega-3s, so their omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is going to be balanced. They're going to have um, um, more CLAs because they are eating these green forages and they're eating um, they're eating these bugs. And so that's kind of the irony, I think, of like, you know, if you see organic 
organic uh, eggs in the grocery store and it says fed a vegetarian diet, um, I don't want my chickens to be eating a vegetarian diet because they're omnivores. So I want them eating bugs and even I've seen chickens eating small rodents like eating mice and voles. So I think that's how, I think, I think the better they eat, the healthier you are and you can see it. You can see it visually in the egg yolk and in the way that the egg white sits up in a frying pan and you can definitely taste it when you uh, eat the butter or eat the eggs or eat the meat. All right. Thank you, Brooks, and I look forward to consuming all of your meat products. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. Yeah. All right, so Brooks, when will your chickens and beef be available for garage strength? Our pastured meat will be available in late August, and we will have updates on northmountainpastures.com frequently. All right, thank you very much.